Hey guys, it's Joe. Welcome back to my guides for the rares of the Mist of Pandaria. Today we're going to be looking at the final zone, one we will all be very familiar with as it is the end game zone where you do all your dailies and the main cities are, the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. This zone goes more back to what the Valley of the Four Winds and the Kun Lai Summit had in terms of fun vanity items, so I'm looking forward to showing you guys those at the end of the video this time. One very important note to this zone in beta, and I'm assuming it'll be the same in live, is that it is phased. You will have to do the initial quest to get into the zone in the Kunlain Summit, and some daily quests here with the Golden Lotus to be able to unphase to the point where you actually see the rares. This was something that wasn't initially true, but was changed during different builds, so I'm assuming the way it is now is the way it's going to be, so be prepared that you won't initially just be able to run in and start grabbing rares. Alright, without further ado, let's go to our first rare, which is ironically the first rare that I killed in the Mist of Pandaria beta, Yorick Sharpeye. He's not too far away from the Shrine of Seven Stars, which is the Alliance main city, so he might be killed often. He might be one of the harder ones to get. I would imagine NPC scan probably will catch him when you're in the main city, so yeah, expect him to be dead a lot. So very nostalgic. This kill was over two months ago. I had no idea what his abilities were. You can see my health. Oh, it was ugly, but it got done. Anyway, York Sharpie drops Mr. Smite's Brass Compass. Release the memories of a long-lost first mate. <laughs> yes, it is who you think it is. It's pretty cool. I'll show you that here at the end. All right, moving a little west, we go to San Tidehunter. He is a Jinyu hanging out by a little pond there. First things first, notice the crab in the background. I believe that is a kill for a daily, so again, he is by some place that will have a lot of activity, so he'll probably be dead fairly often. Now the other thing is, notice Rain Dance here. I'm going to interrupt this, which I don't think I said I could do in the first video. So bear in mind, and as a bear I was able to use the tier 5 talent, Mighty Bash, and also Bear Hug to stun him to keep him from doing that. So that's another bit of uh, information. Anyway, he drops the Aqua Jewel, increases swim speed by 50%, and allows underwater breathing for 10 minutes. Not fantastically useful for us druids, but for the rest of you folk, you might like that a lot. Alright, continuing our way west, we make our way to the White Petal Lake and Moldo One-Eye. He actually has a long path, as you can see with the yellow line there. He walks back and forth, and there are some ads you might want to pull him away from. Alright, I'm joined once again with my partner in rare killing crime, that was hard to say, Claudia. And unfortunately, I don't get the drop off of this guy, and I never could. But what he's supposed to drop is called the Pan Flute of Pandaria. Play the Pan Flute, causing nearby creatures to follow you for 15 minutes. So this is something similar to when you use the food Critter Bites to control critters. And just like in my previous videos, my friend Euphile will show us that at the end here. Alright, we drift a little south to Iran the Shifting Cloud, a Pandaren hiding in a cave. Once again, these Pandaren have adversity to hanging out in the weather, but apparently he's the Shifting Cloud. I, have to, I don't know what it all means. Alright, dragging him out of his cave and making him endure the sunlight! And he's dead, so, well, I guess I didn't have the best intentions I was trying to kill him, but... He does drop the essence of the breeze. Unleash a gentle breeze. Lightening your steps can only be used in Pandaria. Interesting. The only thing that's missing is the flavor text of pull my finger. I'm sorry, but that just sounds like a fart toy to me. Should have like the reagent of beans or something. Anyway, moving on. All right, we shift down southwest to Nanners. <laughs> no, no, not just any Nanners. Major Nanners. What, is he like in the military or something? What is this? Anyway, you can see he's up on a hill. He's surrounded by a whole lot of other elites. So what you want to do is actually, I killed one there, you can see. But normally what you can do is just pull him down into the water here. Then you won't have to deal with those other elites at all. Thanks to Claudia for that strategy, by the way. Like an idiot, I was ready to kill all the elites to get to him. Check this out. This is an interesting little bug. He dies and floats in the air as if he's dying in the water, but he's above it. That was interesting. Anyway, so he drops helpful Winky's whistle. Boy, I just can't get around wanting to make a dirty joke about that. But anyway, calls helpful Wiki, who... Did I say Winky the first time? No, that didn't help the dirty situation. Calls helpful Wiki, who will <laughs> forage for you and bring back presents. Okay, so that one is unique. I definitely have to show you what that's about at the end. 
All right, continuing west over towards the Great Wall here, we have Celtic the Blight. Again, one of my favorites, the Mantids. Oh, they're such a pain in the butt. Though I do have to say, like on the Jinyu, the Mighty Bash and the Bear Hug actually prevents him from doing some of his abilities, which I didn't think was possible, but I digress. Anyway, he drops, unfortunately not this time, but normally he drops the Bottled Tornado. It helps you jump high into the sky, can only be used outdoors. I guess that totally makes sense. Only a two minute cooldown on it, which is cool. It is a trinket, so it will take a slot. Yet another drop I could not get, but my friend Euphile will come around and show you that in a bit. All right, we head up north to the next to last rare in the zone, the Mogu Sorcerer, Kang the Soul Thief. All right, first thing you might notice is there's a lot of dead bodies around there that has nothing to do with us. Although, there are a lot of ads that pat around his area, so you'll have to do a little clearing. In fact, there's one ad that is actually connected to him, so you will pull him as well. And there's nothing you can do about it. Just take him out or however you want to handle it. Unfortunately, Kang did not drop what I needed here, which is Kang's Bindstone. It says, become infused with stone, granting a chance upon killing an opponent to encase them in stone. <laughs> I laugh because as I didn't get it, you finally did, and we have some pretty good footage of that. Can't wait to show you. All right, we head northeast to the Golden Stair, where we find Urgalax, the final rare in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, and in this case for me, the final rare in Pandaria for the achievement. Now, this is a very busy area. There's a lot of dailies and things going on, so he may be very difficult to kill as well. He is also close to the horrid main city, Shrine of Two Moons, so NPC scan, sort of like York with the Alliance side, he may be difficult to kill because of that as well. Again, with this being a quest hub, you can see the many ads in the background behind him, and as well as these little ads that spawn next to us that we have to deal with several times throughout this fight. So. You might have to do some clearing, you want to bring a friend, whatever else, just bear in mind, especially, well, if you're in a PvP server, this will be real interesting as well. So, but yeah, just bear all this in mind when you go after these things. As you can see here, here comes more of those ads, even though we've gone through this fight for several minutes. And we're about to finish up Urgalax, and that will give me, there it is, glorious. The achievement for getting all the rares down in every zone so anyway so we finish up those ads and we check and see what he drops and nothing no special item <laughs> normally what he drops is called the chalice of secrets a given to your anger for 10 seconds while active the next killing blow made against a player will transform you into a mogu for five seconds preventing any actions from being taken while you gloat 10 minute cooldown Fun little vanity item, not a whole lot of use from it, but it doesn't take a trinket slot or anything, so no big deal. Alright, so let's review with the achievement, which we haven't seen since the very first video for Valley of the Four Winds, and that's glorious. And there you go, you can see all 56 rares listed there. Now, originally in my rares guide for Valley of the Four Winds, I said it was 40-something, but that was what was listed on the achievement at the time, so I was going by that. Obviously, I knew that there were 8 per zone with 7 zones, but... I took it verbatim for what the achievement says. I'm assuming the achievement has been updated, of course, to include all 56 now, so... Also in the process of doing these videos, I've found that there are other random rares that don't have anything to do with the achievement that I'm going to document in a supplemental video. So while the zones are now covered and all the videos are done for the zones, there is one more video I'm going to be working on just to give you a little taste of some of the other ones that are around in Pandaria. All right, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the items that we got and what they do. Actually, first what we're going to look at is something we've been getting these whole videos but couldn't be opened before. It's the small bag of goods. So now you guys can see what's in them. You can see some cloth, motes of harmony, which is some crafting item, uh, ghost ore, some gold, which is about what I thought it would be. There's some fool's cap, which is for alchemy, so there's all kinds of stuff. Like I said, I figured it would just be some crafting stuff, some cloth, and some money, and that's precisely what it was. Alright, first up we're going to look at the Aqua Jewel, which increases your swim speed by 50% and allows underwater breathing for 10 minutes. Alright, so we're just going to hop in the water here and test it out. As you can see, I'm moving at a pretty decent clip. Of course, no breathing bar, so yeah, there's the unlimited breathing. But I do like the little camouflage kind of visual to this. It actually is really cool because, look, it even affects you when you're mounted, so your mount has the same look. I saw some people flying into the main city with that on. I had no idea what was going on, but I think that's pretty dang cool. 
Now I did get to thinking about whether this stacked for us druids. As you can see here, I'm going to look at my glyph, that glyph of aquatic form that increases speed, swim speed, by 50%. And since the aqua jewel also did 50%, I wanted to test out to see if they stacked. Okay, so you can see me in my aquatic form, which has the glyph and 50%, and then I take off the aqua jewel and same speed, so it does not stack, unfortunately. Still, again, for you non-druids, you're getting exactly what we have, for at least for the 10 minutes breathing, uh, all the time with our aquatic form. You get the 50% without the glyph, and then the unlimited breathing. So, not a bad deal. There only seems like one place fitting to demonstrate Mr. Smite's brass compass, as it says, release the memories of a long lost first mate. They're not kidding. This brings back memories. You there! Check out that noise! Yeah, I'm sure many of you saw this during Wrath and everything before the changes even in Kata, but as an old vanilla player, that really brings back memories. Makes me wonder what Mr. Smite would think of being replaced and left out of this new Dead Minds. Whoa, whoa, wait. Apparently he's not too happy about it. Oh, God. Oh, God, he's pissed! He's pissed! He doesn't like this new Dead Mind. Oh, oh, he's manning the cannon! Well, finally, Mr. Smite is free. He's being released from his Dead Minds hell. For all these years of being killed by us players, he can finally go out and breathe the fresh air. So long, Mr. Smite. It's so good to have you back. Do you have any last words for us? Moo, are you happy now? Alright, moving on. Next up is Hopeful Wiki's Whistle. And you can see I used the whistle there, and here comes Wiki hanging out. He hears the whistle. And so he's supposed to bring back presents. He's going to go forage for me. So he's just kind of hanging out. I don't know. I thought he was going to forage the herb for me. I didn't know exactly what the presence was and what he was going to forage. So I talked to him, of course, and he says he's going to go find presents. So he goes and runs off. So my question was, how long is he gone for? When does he come back? What happens? So I stood there for a while. So after standing there for a while, wondering what was happening, I decided to look it up online. Luckily, there was some information on Milehead, and it said you had to kill about 40 to 50 different mobs for him to finally come back. So I went ahead and just started grouping up these turtles and killing them, and what do you know? Look, down there in the text. Helpful Wiki says, Wiki is back. So there he is, and indeed he is back. So I'll go ahead and talk to him. Thanks, Wiki. And let's see what he gives us. A bag of helpful things. Let's see what's in that. All right, let's open it up. And we have, let's see, some Moda Harmony, Elixir of Peace, Elixir of Mirrors, and Dark Water Potion. That's exactly what those are. Dark Water Potion transforms you into a Jinyu Assassin, increasing movement speed by 70% and swim speed up to 200%. Only lasts 15 seconds, though. Then we have the Elixir of Mirrors, which increases your dodge by 750 for one hour. So that's a nice little flask. Then the Elixir of Peace, which increases spirit by 750 for one hour. Again, not a bad deal. Key to it is you have to kill 40 or 50 before he comes back with those items, so I suppose you got to make sure you hit that before you go out and do your dailies or something like that to make it worth your while. All right, we're back at our little pond, and we're going to see what the Dark Water Potion does. Transforms you into a Jinyu Assassin. Ooh, I'm a fish assassin. Excellent. So, and of course it increases your speed by 70%. So you can see on land I'm moving pretty fast. Swim speed up to 200%. Really nice. Of course, unfortunately, again, only for 15 seconds, but I guess you can use it in an emergency, but it is consumed as soon as you use it, so it's a one-shot deal, guys. I'm sure what you get in the bag is completely random, but at least that gives you an idea of what to look forward to. All right, next up, we have our friend Euphiley back showing us the bottled tornado. As you can see, little animation, flying the air, and bam. I don't know if you can use that to get anywhere. I'm assuming you probably just go straight up, but still, eh, might come in handy, I guess. Next up, we have the Pan Flute of Pandaria, which you play the Pan Flute, as you can hear, causing nearby critters to follow you for 15 minutes. You can see they've turned friendly to her, and they say Euphiles minions, but they're not moving. So obviously that's just a bug in the beta right now. But, you know, that is what they're supposed to do. If you've ever seen people use the Critter Bites, that's the exact same thing. So I promise it does work, it just wasn't working at this time. Alright, next up is the Essence of the Breeze. Unleash a gentle breeze, lightening your steps. As you can see, I've had my steps lightened, and it just basically you just walk and it makes you jump a little bit and has the little animation. That's pretty much it. And so you know it works in multiple forms for druids as well, so my 
Big Bear is a little bit light on the feet there. And in the new stag form, nobody's gonna stop this Rudolph from playing in their damn reindeer games. Next up, we have the Chalice of Secrets, which specifically says that you have to have a killing blow against a player to transform into a Mogu for five seconds while you gloat. So I switch to my horde character, and you finally kills me, and then she gloats as a Mogu warrior, as you can see in the background. Here's a better view of it up close, and bam. And you can see, really is gloating, laughing, and then, yeah, kiss off, son of a... Anyway, yeah, I enjoyed being killed, and she enjoyed doing it. Look at her. Yeah, way too happy about killing me. And we figured while we were there, we'd try out Kang's Bind Stone. We weren't sure if this would actually work on a player. It just says an opponent. But yeah, specifically it was a player, and then bam, look at me. Encased in stone. Instead of dying. Yes, yeah, she claps excitedly for me as I'm stuck. And still really, really way too happy about this. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know. Maybe it kind of is humiliating. I don't know. I think I struck a good pose, though. All right, guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much, as always, for being with me on this particular guide for this zone, as well as all the other zones now that this is complete. You will see a big annotation on this map that will lead you to the main map video where you can select any zone you want now, and you can check out all the rares of the Mist of Pandaria. There will be the supplemental video that I'll be making for the other rares, which will be on the main map as well, so keep an eye out for that. Until then, enjoy all the guides and these videos I have linked here as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, take care, guys.